Welcome back to UGC Net English class. In the previous class, we were discussing the second part of the history of American literature. Today we will discuss uh, one of Charles Dickens' novellas, The Chimes. The Chimes written by Charles Dickens. The Chimes was published in 1844. Charles Dickens, born in 1812 and passed away in 1870. The full title of the novella is The Chimes, a goblin story of some bells that rang an old year out and a new year in. So it is important to remember the subtitle of the work, The Chimes, a goblin story of some bells that rang an old year out and a new year in. The brief summary of the work is, the story tells about a character, Trotty. So the story of the Chimes concerns a working class man, Trotty, who comes to believe that he is worthless and worries that working class people are wicked by nature. So one who feels lack of confidence on every ground, who is the central character. But what happened? On New Year's Eve, some goblins, goblins means a mischievous, ugly creature, a dwarfish creature. So some goblins show him visions of what will become of his loved ones if they are allowed to continue believing that they are worthless and wicked. So the goblins, you know, make really make him understand that it is important to really be feeling self-worth. So the message, the lessons of self-worth. You should always believe in yourself. That is the message of the novella. So after, you know, the encounter with the goblins, Trotty turns out to be a confident man. So then onwards, he changes his point of view. He starts to believe in himself and he starts to believe in his abilities and the possibilities to achieve improvement in life. So it is a novella. Novella means a work that stands between a short story and a novel. It is not so long as a novel but not so short as a short story. The length is in between a novel and a short story. Now the work was first published in one year after a Christmas carol. So it is, you know, one of the series of works published by Charles Dickens. So after the Christmas carol, he published The Chimes in 1844. The five novellas with strong social and moral messages so these five novels include A Christmas Carol, The Chimes, The Cricket on the Hearth, A Battle of Life, The Haunted Man and The Ghost Bargain. So remember the five Christmas stories written by Charles Dickens. It is very very important. The five Christmas stories written by Charles Dickens include A Christmas Carol, The Chimes, The Cricket on the Hearth, the Battle of Life, The Haunted Man, and The Ghost Bargain. And this story, The Chimes, was written inspired by his visit to Italy. So after his visit to Italy, he got the idea to write this story. The protagonist is Toby, Toby Weck, or we can call Trotty Weck, Toby Weck, or Trotty Beck. In 1914, the book was made into a silent film with the same name, The Chimes, directed by Thomas Bentley. So the novel was published in 1844 and Thomas Bentley 
directed a film based on the novel with the same title. Now let's see what uh, does the title indicate. The chimes are all the bells in the church on a whose steps Trotty Beck piles his trade. So Trotty is a porter, a message porter, a ticket porter we can say. One who carries message, you know, some uh, documents, etc. So, we understand that he works near the church and the chiming of the bells or the chiming of the church clock is the indication in the title. That is the chimes, the church bells or the church clock. When, it, when the time needle it reaches the quarter time, it will sound. So the title, the chimes are all the bells in the church on whose steps Trotty Beck piles his trade. The book is divided into four parts, named quarters, after the quarter chimes of a striking clock. So according to the chiming of the clock, the book is divided. So when the quarter uh, chiming, that means when the needle reaches the, uh, uh, shows the quarter time, it will chime four times. It will be just like, uh, you know, this. You hear the sound. So it will be like this chiming. So once more you hear four times. That's what the division based on this the chapters are divided into four indicating the quarter hour chime. Now the theme of the work themes include the chime represent time. So the chime in the or uh, chiming of the church bells indicate the elapsing of time. And the main theme of the story are summarized in the three wrongs they accuse Trotty of committing. So the goblins uh, find fault with the Trotty because he believes three wrong ideas he carries with his you know life. So they are his first wrong idea is harking back to a golden age that never was instead of striving to improve conditions here and now. So he believes past, past, the life in the past was good. So that is the wrong idea. You always look back at the gone by days. That is wrong because we should be progressive. We should look forward to we look towards the future. But eh? Trotty always does it the other way around. So instead of striving to improve conditions here and now, he always looks back at his life and believing that life was comfortable earlier. So when you show no interest towards future, so he has no interest. So this is one of his mistakes and a second mistake is uh, believing that individual human joys and sorrows do not matter to a higher power. So he believes that God never minds human sorrows and all. So he, uh, you know, distrust the power of God. That is also wrong. You should believe in the power of the ultimate God and uh, always strive hard to go forward. And his third mistake, condemning those who have fallen and unfortunate and offering them neither help nor pity. So he condemns the unfallen and unfortunate people. He just, you know, scorns them. But uh, he never tried to help them or take pity on them. So he, need, he needs a compassionate mind. So he lacks the compassionate mind. So he needs a compassionate mind. Which means to take pity on the 
suffering people and if uh, you can you should try something to uplift them from the terrible or bad condition so these all he learns from the message of the goblins so let's analyze the summary in detail on new year's eve trotty a poor elderly ticket porter which means to carry message documents luggage etc he is filled with a gloom at the reports of crime and immorality in the newspaper so every time he reads the newspaper he sees uh, so many bad news crime such activities you know he wonders whether the working classes are simply wicked by nature so he wonders whether the class he belongs that means his own people whether they are always wicked so he has a self doubt so that is not good so he believes that middle class people are always like this the working class people his daughter meg and her long time fiance richard arrive and announce their decision to marry next day so when he was bothering off the condition of the working class his daughter meg comes with her lover richard so they declare their plan to marry next day Trotty is not happy to hear the news, but he tries to hide that from his daughter. So when Trotty hears the news, the declared, you know, marriage plan of his daughter, he was not happy. He doubts them. No, he doubts their future too. So he has a self doubt, and he also uh, never, you know, dares to believe the decisions of others. That is a wrong thing. so he lacks a certain amount of positivity on everything on the on his perspective on life the local magistrate named acute arrives with some other wealthy men so at this time a local magistrate and the some other wealthy people come there they ask trotty and meg some questions about the lifestyles making it clear that they consider back and his daughter to be objects of curiosity and also as members of inclines under class a potential danger to society so the wealthy people the magistrate named cute he and the fellow rich people they come and insult trotty and his daughter so they believe that these poor people are always fated to live a life of poverty and they are always a danger as far as the rich people and the rich country england is concerned trotty back carries a message from cute to the member of parliament sir joseph bowle so now cute gives him a message so we know that trotty is a ticket porter or a message porter his uh, duty is to carry message from one person to another or carry some documents or luggage or some such a work now the person magistrate cute gives him a message in order to give it to the member of parliament the mp sir joseph bowle when a trotty arrives sir joseph makes a great show of how he is uh, paying off all of his debt before the start of the new year so next day is new year so when trotty arrives we see jo sir joseph the member of parliament mp joseph bowle he shows off he says that it is important to pay off all the debts before new year the next day is new year so he asks trotty if he has cleared all of his debts
Trotty is ashamed to admit that he still owes a small amount to his local shop. So Trotty is not able to pay off his debts before the next day. So next day is the New Year's Day. He leaves with the feeling that he and the other poor people are worthless. So the rich people, they always boast before the working class people and the working class people develop a kind of inferiority out of this show off. So Trotty again feels that he and the working class are really worthless. On the way home, Trotty meets with a poor countryman named Will Fern and his orphaned niece Lillian. So he meets a countryman, Will Fern and his niece Lillian. Fern has been accused of being a vagrant and is on his way to Cute's house to plead his case. So the person Fern has been accused of being a vagrant. Vagrant means a person who wanders from place to place and a beg. So he is accused as a beggar. So he has to beg pardon from the magistrate cute who never likes the poor people. Cute the magistrate never likes the poor people. So he will charge a case against the person Will Fern. Because Will Fern is accused as a vagrant or a beggar. Trotty warns the man that the cute plans to arrest him. So Fern has been accused of being a vagrant and is going to cute's house to plead his case. But Trotty wants that cute plans to arrest him so don't go. He persuades Fawn and the child to stay at his house for the night where he and Meg share what little food they have with them. So Trotty lets them stay at his house. The next day is New Year's Day. Meg tries to hide her distress but it seems she has been dissuaded from marrying Richard by her encounter with a cute and the others. So after meeting rich people and their talk, you know, listening to their insults, Meg also feels a kind of inferiority. She was very happy in order to, you know, marry with the feeling that she would be able to marry her lover Richard the next day. But after hearing the insulting words from the magistrate cute, she also feels that people like her, the middle class people, they are really worthless. That night, Trotty believes that he can hear the bells of the nearby church calling his name. So when he goes to sleep, Trotty feels that the church bells are calling his name to come near the church. So he goes out and finds the door to the bell tower unlocked. And he goes out of the house and reaches near the church and finds out there the bell tower is unlocked. So he can actually enter the bell tower. So he climbs up to the top of the bell tower and finds there each bell has its own goblin attended. So when he goes, he sees there each bell has a goblin, a wicked small creature. The goblin chastises Beck for having lost faith in people's ability to improve. So the goblin chides him because Trotty never believes in his own power or he suspects the abilities of others just like how he suspected his own daughter's decision. He is told that he is now dead having fallen down on his way up the bell tower. So the goblins now tell him that 
he is dead. That's how he has reached the bell tower. Because when Trotty went to sleep that night, he had a feeling that the church bells calling his name. So actually the goblin still goes because he is dead. The goblins force Beck, Beck means Trotty to watch a series of visions that show the future lives of Meg, Richard, Wilfon and Lillian who after Beck's death have been left with the impression that they are people of no importance. So the goblins had a chastised him, Trotty for his wrong beliefs. So the goblins show him some visions, the future lives of the people he really know, the lives of Meg, Richard, etc. So after Trotty's death, they all feel that they are people of no importance. So everyone, including the rich and the poor, they all feel they are silly. Being dead, Trotty is not able to intervene and stop his loved ones from making mistakes. So Trotty can now see, through his vision he can see, what the people, his beloved people and others, their activities he can see. But he is actually dead now, so he can't control their life. So their life's activities he can't control, but he can simply witness. Having not been able to marry Meg when he wanted to, Richard becomes an alcoholic. So he understands, he sees the future of his uh, daughter and her lover. So his daughter Meg was not a... Uh, able to marry Richard. So Richard finally turns out to be an alcoholic. Meg eventually marries him, but he dies penniless soon afterwards, leaving her with a baby. Then eventually when Meg marries Richard, they were very poor. And finally, Richard dies, leaving her with a baby. Next, he sees the future life of Wilfan, Wilfan, the vagabond, or we can say the wandering beggar. Will constantly suffers as a result of petty laws and restrictions and often finds himself in prison. So, Will's life is no better. He suffers because of the law of the land and he is often imprisoned for begging. And his orphaned, Will Fern's orphaned niece, whose name was Lillian. Next, Trotty sees the future life of Lillian. Lillian was the orphaned niece of Will Fern. So Lillian is forced to turn to prostitution to support herself. After Will is imprisoned, Lillian, you know, has no other way to support herself, so she turns to prostitution. Trotty finally sees a vision of Meg about to drown herself and her child. And after this, Trotty sees the future of his own daughter Meg and her child. So in that vision, he sees Meg. When she couldn't support herself and her child, she decides to commit suicide by drowning. Now Trotty cries out that he has learned his lesson and pleads with the goblins not to allow his daughter and grandchild to die. Now Trotty, he feels that he can change the fate of them. So he wants his daughter and child to be alive. So he begs the goblins not to allow his daughter and grandchild to die. Trotty then finds that he can touch Meg and stops her from killing herself. 
So after begging, Toti suddenly then feels that he can actually touch Meg and to stop her from committing suicide. So the visions end and Toti wakes up at a home. So he wakes up at a home. The goblins have really blessed him. So he got back to life. Now Trotty has learned that people are not naturally wicked but fall into wickedness when they have no alternative and when they have no faith in themselves. So now Trotty learns the lesson of life. That people are wicked because of some reason. So they can be wicked but you always you know can change them or you can influence them. You can feel positive spirit in them just like you can always Feel the positive energy in yourself in order to come out beautifully in life. So he learns that the power is within himself. If he decides that he will be positive, everything will be positive. He can even change the lives of others. The story ends with the celebration of Magana Richards bearing on the New Year's Day. So next day, the next morning comes and the New Year's Day, it is 30, is now happy. He completely enjoys the marriage of McGandy Richard. He uh, believes in the positive way. He trusts them. So it is important to trust the decisions of others. Now the story ends there. So remember the full title of the story. The Chimes. A goblin story of some bells that rang an old year out and a new year in. So an old year out. An old year is gone and a new dawn has come. That is all positivity. Now let's analyze the characters once more. Our hero, Toby or Trotty Beck. The protagonist, a poor elderly messenger or ticket porter. Then his daughter, Meg. Her full name is Margaret. Margaret or Meg Beck. Or Margaret Beck. Toby's 21 year old daughter. Then The next is Mrs. Ann Chicken Stalker, the local shopkeeper. Mrs. Ann Chicken Stalker is a local shopkeeper. Then we have the old man cute. The old man cute who is a justice of the peace, the magistrate. Then we have another character, Mr. Filer. Mr. Filer is a political economist in the utilitarian mold. Mr. Filer, a political economist in the utilitarian mold. Then we have Sir Joseph Bowley. Sir Joseph Bowley is a rich MP. Then we have Will Fun. Will Fun is a Countryman, the vagrant beggar. Then his uh, orphan niece, Lillian Fern. Lillian Fern, Will's orphan niece. So that's the story, the chimes. So that's all for today. In the next class, we will discuss the biography of T.S. Eliot.